Hey, what up everybody? Kenji back for some more drafting here on Magic Online. Thanks for tuning in to the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. We've got uh, another flashback vintage cube back already. Uh, hopefully we're not already tired of the new Kamigawa set. I think Neon Dynasty is actually fantastic, but they've brought back a new uh, updated cube, which I haven't. This is the first time I've played it, so... This should be pretty interesting. I've heard good things from uh, everybody so far that uh, all of the updates have made it feel pretty good. But it's the same old song and dance for the most part. Vintage Cube. And yeah, let's just jump right into our pick one, pack one. We opened a Fractured Identity, a Leovold. Looks like they've added some of these uh, cycling lands from Modern Horizons in. That should be a nice improvement. I think it's pretty hard to pass Fractured Identity. Card is just a little bit too powerful. Um, yeah, let's take it and see what goes from there. Okay, second pick, we get ourselves a Zealous Conscripts. You can see some of the new cards from Kamigawa, as we have a Tamiyo Completed Sage. Uh, I guess we're probably just going to take the Demir Signet here. Yeah, I can't really go wrong with any of these artifact ramp cards and this one produces blue so i think that fits right on line with our first pick eh, typhoon is solid though but i think signet is going to pay off the most at the end of the day moving into pack number three a lot of good reanimate targets here we have grizzlebrand emrakul sphinx archon and like the frantic search to all discard them away uh, for us here, we have like Arid Mesa is good, Fiery Islet's good. I mean, I could take any of these cards. It's the beginning of the draft, so there's no like uh, no reason to <clears throat> commit into any one archetype off the bat, which is why I think taking the land is always just a safe pick, especially fetches with so many duels running around. You know, a fetch is going to be pretty good. 99% of the time. Yeah, we'll just stick with that for now. Interesting. We got a fourth pick, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Hmm. Oh, they added Red Elemental Blast. That's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> kind of funny. We have Umazawa's GT and then Umazawa. <laughs> Not the original, though. This is the, the um, <clears throat> descendant of the original Umazawa, so... But good flavor-wise. Yeah, I don't see how we just pass Jays at all, given what we've already taken. Balance now, Hollowed Fountain. Oh, baby. Ooh, I think this is a really close pick. Oh, man. God, the Hollowed Fountain makes our Arid Mesa so, so good, especially with what we've already taken. But Balance is just... Balance is such a swingy card that I think I'm going to end up taking it here. Um, it... It is much more likely to wield than Hollowed Fountain, but I think the balance is going to pay off higher at the end of the day. And we'll just take the Colonnade now. I don't want to pass all of the blue-white fixing, even though we do have, like, Council's Judgment, which is one of the best white removal spells, Dismember as well, but I know I'm going to regret not taking some of the blue-white lands. Let's take the Godless Shrine here out of this pack over Banishing Light. Uh, I think it's just the best card in the pack anyways, and it is fetchable off of Mesa, so... Already has quite a bit going for it. Yeah. That's a nice one. Eighth pick, Elspeth Conquers Death. Also looking pretty juicy. Okay, moving into a nice little blue-white control deck, perhaps. As we wield Elspeth, Elishnorn. Mm. This Elspeth is pretty awkward with balance. Might not actually be correct. It's possible I should just take the, the land here again for some black... Fixing. I think that's better. If this was the big Elspeth, the six mana Elspeth, I think I would take it. But four mana Elspeth is not as good of a win con. So. Okay, now we can just take a little Blood Chief's Thirst and obviously just easily splash it over, or uh, splash it with the good fixing we already have. Like I already have the Demir Signet as well. Sea Chrome Coast, we're going to take that over Soulfire Grandmaster, 100%. All right, yeah, this was a great pack one for us. Oh, as we get a Wrath here as well. I often overlook this when I'm uh, not drafting black, but of course you can just overload this. So you don't even need the double black, but it looks like we might be able to cast the backside of the dam anyway. 
this is probably one of the better starts I've had for uh, for like an Esper control deck. Um, I mean, no power or anything crazy, but the majority of the cards we've taken are just all on theme. And I mean, even Ashen Rider, if we really wanted to, could find its way in the deck. So, good start. Pretty happy with this. Um, and yeah, this is this is only pack one, so having this much fixing already means we get to take all of the blue, the white, and the black goodies. Okay, last few pickups here. Lyra for a good sideboard card versus an aggressive deck. And a Mutavolt, which I don't think we want. Uh, Spell-wise, we picked up, what, seven cards out of pack one, so not two shabs. As we get a Tinker, a Bloodstained Mire, an Urza, a Wrath of God, a Sli Silent Clearing, another fantastic pack. We already passed on the Colossus, that was in pack one. Um, we could take, like, Tinker and Wheel Sphinx, or we could take Tinker and keep our eyes out for, like, um, Inkwell Leviathan, or what else? Um, Bolas' Citadel is fine. Did also pass Mind Slaver already. That was also in pack one. So, eh. I think we're just going to ignore the Tinker for now and probably just take the Urza. Urza is a little bit too powerful in my opinion. Ah, yeah. They've added a land strategy to this uh, format as well. I think Thespian Stage has been it been in the cube before, but they took it out recently uh, and then added it back in now. I think Merit Lage is also in as well, so, or rather, uh, not Merit Lage, Dark Depths, so you can go ahead and get Merit Lage with that. For us, we've got a Remand, which I think I'm going to take over the Toxic Deluge, then there's like an Oust as well. Since we're going to be in the Esper Colors, I don't think we're going to be... Um, in need of the Toxic as badly. We already have the Dam, and we could probably wield a Wrath. Let's get some cheap interaction. Okay, another decent one here. Shipwreck Marsh, Collective Brutality, Chromox is fine, Portal's fine, Vencer's fine. Um, hmm. Kinda like just taking the Vencer. Again, we are more baseline blue-white control right now with a just just it's a, like a potential black splash. We don't even need to be doing it. So, yeah, let's stick with the blue-white theme. Oh, yeah, another thing they added were a lot of the land destruction uh, spells back in the format. So they had taken out um, cards like Burning Wild, or not Burning Wildfire. Is it Burning Wildfire? No, just Wildfire and then Burning of like uh, Jinzi or... Jin, Jinze, however you pronounce it. Um, and now Yakel Hops, I think I'm pronouncing that one correctly too, hopefully, is back in. Anyways, we have ourselves a Portent, a Gideon, and a Hero Bladehold in addition to a Karn. So a bunch of good choices there. Mm. I mean, we're kind of straying away from the balance deck. Maybe we're just like a good... Blue White Super Friends deck. I think I like taking the Gideon here. Kind of regret passing that uh, that uh, Elspeth now as we pick up a Cryptic Command, Marsh Flats, Urza Saga, Phantasmal Image. Another really solid pack. We are kind of overloading on four drops, but so be it. Oh yeah, let's take Manatithe. Another super funny card. Sorry, Geist of St. Traft. Oh, the Gitrog Monster too. Yeah, they definitely did add. A bunch of land themes. Okay, they've apparently added Field of the Dead too. I do not recall what this does. Five mana, four, two, you become the monarch. Whenever you become the monarch, target player sacrifices a creature. Interesting. Wield. Oh, no, this is not even a wheel. This is pick eight. Gideon Jura, Karn Liberated, and a Daze. Wow, all very, very good here. I think we already have more than enough win cons. I think we just want to go with the uh, the cheap interaction here again. So let's take another counter. Okay, did in fact wield the Wrath of God. I don't know if we need it though. 
Like silent clearing is pretty good here as well. And there's the chance that the toxic comes back, I think in the next pack or the pack after. Yeah, so let's take the clearing into the oust. All right, looks like somebody did take toxic, but that's okay. I don't think I needed it. Land tax versus containment priest. Priest is pretty good, especially if we can go get, um, find ourselves the, what, parallax wave it's called. Yeah, very, very easy black fixing. Courtyard, Godless Shrine, Silent Clearing, Demir Signet, so. We're going to be running the Silent Clearing no matter what, just as a value, I think. Well, I guess, hmm. I guess if we play a versus like an aggressive deck, we're not going to want the Silent Clearing. So maybe we start that in the main, or sideboard rather. And then if we play against a slower deck, we can bring in the Silent Clearing as another utility value land. All right, next pack has for us the O-Stone, which I don't think we want, versus Trinket Mage, which we will take, though we do not have any current targets. Hopefully pack three, we can open some power or something, since I uh, haven't really seen any of that yet. Hey, Wield the Geist. I'll probably end up running that. Yeah, we might even run Field of the Dead in this deck. Now that I think about it, not a bad win con. All right, never lucky. Did not open a single piece of power. Did get a spell seeker here, which can grab the balance, remand, days, oust, manatize. So that's good enough for me. Um, if we had many, many other black cards worthy of splashing, the C would be good. Condemn, brainstorm, also fine, but this just seems like a pretty easy spell seeker. Hey, there's the dark depths. I did not take the um, thespian stage, though, so I'm not going to do any of that nonsense. Um, we have a Library of Alexandria, an Esper Sentinel. Uh, Chalice is actually not terrible, given the number of four drops we have. It also serves as a target for the Trinket Mage. But... Feels like it's pretty hard to pass a library here, so let's just do that. Ooh, a Teferi versus an Ashiok. Great pack. I think I lean towards Teferi a little bit more, but again, this would be a super easy splash with the fixing we've already taken. Volcanic Island. Oh, man. Tundra, Time Warp, and a Miscalculation. Yowza, yowza, yowza. Well, I don't have the blue-white duel since I didn't take the Hollowed Fountain, so I think I have to take Tundra here. But that's really unfortunate, because Time Warp with all these Planeswalkers is super, super good. Uh, and even the Miscalc would be great, but... The smart play is just to take the Tundra and uh, not think twice about that. Ancient Tomb. I do have reservations about Ancient Tomb in our deck. It's usually really, really good, but mana requirement-wise, I don't know if it's going to be a, the easiest of plays here. So if I'm not taking Tomb, what are we taking? Sun Titan or Thieving Skydiver, I guess? Sun Titan has a couple of lands that it can get back, like Mesa and Silent Clearing, and then some random creatures. Yeah, not the best. I think we'll just go with the Skydiver. Another consideration maybe the Fatal Push, but everybody's running artifacts in this format. Skydiver has been super impressive. Oh, there's the Parallax Wave with the Containment Priest combo. Yeah, I th think we're going to do that over Dig Through Time. Uh, this is probably close. Oh, what is this card? Archon of Valor's Reach. Choose Artifact, Enchantment, Instant, Sorcery, or Planeswalker. Cre players can't cast spells of the chosen type. Interesting. Huh. Do I even need Parallax Wave? I have Balance and Dam already. I have the combo with the Priest, but no, nah, I feel like Dig Through Time is going to be better for us. Wow, 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 wow. Channel Emrakul in the same pack. Oh, a couple of new cards here, Wandering Emperor and the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Wandering Emperor actually seems really good in this deck, right? Flash means we get to hold up our counters or whatever and then makes creatures and whatnot. Sure, why not? Damn, an upheaval here? 
Well, we can't play that. What's our playable count at right now? Let's see. Nine, so we're at 22. Wall of Omens is not really a combo with uh, balance, but I do think it's the pick. I mean, if this Signet added either blue or white, we'd take it instead, but Wall of Omens seems fine. And last few pickups here, not going to really matter, it looks like. Savannah doesn't do anything. Ashiok Wield. Okay, well, get in the deck, Ashiok. Time Warp Wield, too? What the heck? I did not expect that to come back around. Even Sun Titan. Picking up the Ashiok made the Sun Titan a little bit more tempting now, I think. That's crazy. Hmm. Wow, this deck looks pretty darn solid. I mean, it doesn't have any power. But, uh, man, we have a lot of the cornerstone, or not cornerstone, but the, uh, the, uh, what's the word? Not showcase, the, anyway, the, <laughs> the good blue black, sorry, the good, the good blue white cards. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. That card's also really good from the new set. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to make some cuts here. I feel like the um, Geist is probably a shave, and then we bring it in versus like another controlly deck. Let's see. Honestly, Urza didn't really get there. We have one artifact, and we're not really going to be using the shuffle ability, so sadly it feels like Urza's a cut. Uh, let's see. I don't need the Wall of Omens. I don't need the Containment Priest. In fact, Containment Priest is a little bit awkward with Sun Titan if we want to bring back one of our creatures. So we can sideboard the uh, the Priest and then bring it in if our opponent's running like some Reanimator or whatever. Uh, one more cut should be sufficient. I'm worried this balance is going to be weird. But I think we leave it in just because the effect is so good. The I mean, I guess the Wall of Omens is a fine cut. Or the Skydiver. I think we'd rather have the Skydiver than the Wall of Omens. I'm okay cutting that. And do we want to run this Field of the Dead like I was saying? We have nine different lands, and then we're going to be running three different basics, so probably. I mean, I guess, yeah, no, that makes sense to me. Four, five, six, seven, eight blue sources. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten white sources. No thanks. Five, six, seven, eight, nine blue sources in land. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine white. So that's still too much. Like, I might only need one planes here. One plane still gives me six. Sorry, one plane still gives me eight white sources. Because it's only Field of the Dead and Library of Alexandria that don't add white. Yeah, I think that might be better. That's going to help us cast the Cryptic Command pretty easily too, I feel like. Ten versus eight, or I could go nine versus nine. Yeah, all right, looks good. Maybe not the most powerful Vintage Cube deck I've ever seen, but this has a pretty darn good game plan, good solid control strategy, so go to round one. All right, all right, round one here of the Vintage Cube with our control -y deck, and we have a fantastic-looking hand here. Love it. On the play with a turn one mana tithe, turn two remand, turn four Venser. What? more could you ask for? I mean, who's going to play around Mana Tithe turn one? Especially off of a white-black land. 
Oh yeah, I'll counter a probe. I will definitely counter a Gataxian probe if they're not gonna <laughs> play a land first. Got him. I'm gonna lead on island here in case they have a strip. I think we'd rather them strip the concealed than the tundra. Demonic tutor. Um Yeah, let's look for like a monastery mentor or something. Have him just recast that next turn seems alright. Ooh. Sadly, I don't think we are playing the Library of Alexandria. It's better to play the Tundra in case I draw Cryptic Command next turn. And it doesn't feel like we're going to be getting into 7 anytime soon anyways. Think of the Remand there as more of like a time walk, right? Sheldock Isle. Okay, well, Esper Control versus Esper Control maybe. In which case, Field of the Dead could be very, very good. Um, in case we do draw Field of the Dead now, I guess we play out the library since we didn't draw Cryptic. Vensering their Sheldock Isle, not a terrible line, but if they're going to miss lands... Actually, if they're going to miss a play, I'm going to pass this turn and try to turn on a library then. Active library in a control matchup is going to be GG's as they cycle miscalc away. Perfect. Yeah, land pass here. All right, and now we're going to fully utilize our library. Okay, it's five different land types now. Pretty backbreaking for them. It's me. <laughs> but it's them. Oh, baby. Oh, they have a click. Do we even care about this? I don't think I do. I think I'm going to let them click me. The, the worst part about the click is them getting a bunch of information. But Venser on click this turn means they get to tap out and do something next turn. So I kind of like just letting it resolve. We have so much gasoline in our hand anyways. Uh, I mean, I could see them taking any of the cards but balance. Any four of these cards would make sense, I, I suppose. Probably one of the five mana spells. They, Yep, they took the Fractured Identity. That makes sense. And let's go ahead and get a nice, nice little tempo turn here. Player land, draw a card with the library, and I'm going to go ahead and go for the time warp, assuming they don't have a mana tithe. Oh, days was another good draw. Now we can go land, two, four, six, seven mana. Man, I really want to bounce their Shell Dock Isle. Funny. Let's go ahead and main phase draw. I guess I can just oust their click if I want to. Too many good lines here. I mean, I need to eventually start pressuring them, yes, but... 
I guess let's go ahead and just oust their click and pass. They know about the Elspeth Conqueror's Death, the Venser, and the Balance, but they don't know about Dig, Cryptic, or Daze. Um, I'm going to go for Venser end of turn. Target their Sheldock Isle. That's fine. That gets a creature in our yard for Elspeth Conqueror's death, and we still get to draw a card here. Looking like looking for like Ashiok or something, ideally. Uh, I think we're just gonna go Island Pass. Try to keep our Library of Alexandria online. I'm a little bit concerned about their Sheldock Isle, but. I mean, I don't have like a Snapcaster Mage. I guess I could just ECD and eat my Venser. Let's see. Any other reasons to keep the spells in the graveyard? Oh, I have Sun Titan. Oh, wait. Do I even, did I even want Sun Titan in the main deck? I don't remember that. But we'll go ahead and dig through time here. Just eat everything. Sun Titan probably comes out for the uh, Geist in this matchup. So we get a Jace, and what does Spellseeker have left to hit? Just the Blood Chief's Thirst. So maybe you just want the Silent Clearing. Uh, oh, wait, we can just take the Thirst itself. Sure, that makes more sense. Nice draw. There it is. All right, here comes their click again. Yes. So I'm going to counter that and bounce their shell dock aisle. Play out the field of the dead. And I can either Jace here or keep the library. I think I'm going to go ahead and just slam the Jace and start fate sealing them. They have a daze. We can daze their daze back. Brainstorm. Let me put that card on the bottom. Um, yes, we want to put that on the bottom because they have the Sheldock Isle. I need to find my Ashiok is what I need to find. Okay. Oh, treasure treasure cruise now. All right. Man, this is quite the game. Quite the control match here. As they have a Jace Vrin's Prodigy. Well, we get to blow that up one of a number of ways. 
Start off by... I guess we want to brainstorm, huh? Not bad. Let's put these lands back. Then we play the Mesa, make a 2-2. Two -two. Shuffle. Let's see, I'm going to draw. I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, I mean, I've already blown the majority of my counters is the biggest issue here. All right, paying two life shouldn't be a problem. Let's go ahead and draw another card. That's not anything good. Go ahead and thirst their Jace. And I guess maybe we just hold up the Wandering Emperor over... Over Sun, eh, Sun Titan's gonna make him try to make him do something, and I get another two two from the Mesa, anyways. All right, pretty good turn, but <sighs> shields are down for them with Sheldock Isle. All right, here it comes. What is it? Fractured Identity on Sun Titan, sure. And that gets back their Prodigy. That's fine. Man, they still have six cards in their hand. <laughs> So I have Spell Seeker as a shuffle effect, and I have the Arid Mesa, which doesn't have any targets, but also has a shuffle effect. Oh, you know what? I guess something else I didn't realize in deck building. Arid Mesa only has, what, three or four total targets in the deck, because I'm only on one planes. Hmm. Wow, Glenelandra Archmage with no blue open. I'm okay with that. Colonnade's a great draw. All right, so we need to deal with... Let's exile that, most likely. I guess we start off with a card draw of library first. Hmm. Yeah, makes sense. Let's get rid of that uh, Glenelendra. And then I think I like bouncing. Actually, do I care about bouncing either of those? No, maybe not. Maybe I should just draw. Fractured again. Nice. Uh, so we can put a couple lands on back and shuffle if we want to. Our spell seeker's no good here, too. I guess we'd rather have lands as the creatures. Five cards in their hand still. All right, we'll play out the planes, and that way I can flash out the wanderer.
pretty funky game. Uh, I need to probably play a little bit faster. Already down to 17 minutes. Oh, that's not good. All right, we need to flash out the wander in response there then. So I can still activate the Wanderer. Uh, I guess we're going to fracture identity there to fairy. As they were turning a zombie token, that's fine. Drawing a card. Attacking Jace. So I think we're just chumping this turn. And go ahead and poop out a 2-2. Two -two. Go ahead and shuffle. Draw a new card since we bought them a bunch of lands. Make all their spells cost two more. Draw a card. Uh, let's go for Mentor. Into Identity. They might very well have another counter here, but the Conqueror's Death makes it cost two more. Oh my god, Spell Pierce. Yikes. And I didn't, I mean, I was planning on playing the Colony out, but got a little bit punished there for sure. All right, let's return their token to their hand. Pump, colonnade, attack the Teferi with both and their face with the 3-3. Three, three. <sighs> So they can Jace and flash back their Fractured Identity, but I think that's way too low power. I mean, they can hit like the uh, the Elspeth Conquers Death with their Fractured Identity, but I don't know if that's going to be good enough. Crazy game. They have a lot of counter magic too. Miscalc, Counterspell, Daze, Glenelendra, Spell Pierce. Then they have Click and Probe and Teferi, so this is not going to be an easy matchup for us. <clears throat> Dig through time. Okay. Well, that's good, because now they have very little mana to work with this turn. They're going to need a Wrath of their own. Oh, wait, they can't even cast a Wrath because of the uh, Elspeth Conquer's death. So they need like balance, I guess. No, but then, but then we still get back our monastery mentor from the Elspeth Conquers, if that's the case. All right, draw. Go ahead and 
brainstorm or yeah brainstorm makes sense I think we're just going for lethal here oh yeah and that's that should be uber lethal now Gideon triggers Just gonna do the anthem effect here. Signet trigger again, and then animate colonnade. I'm guessing that's lethal. Hey, all right. Crazy game one. Their deck looks very well suited for ours, uh, unfortunately. We bring in the Geist 100%. Balance looks like a cut. A 2-2 a two -two Flash creature looks fine. Wrath comes out. Spirit probably comes in. Um, let's see. Oust looks bad. The Thirst can still hit Planeswalkers, so it seems like that's worth it. Uh, oh, you know what? Mutavolt actually looks pretty good here, too. Maybe over one of our islands is okay. Let's see. I have to remember, Mesa only has, what, the three targets? So that's a little bit scary, but that's still plenty. Um... Yeah, I think we're going to go like that. Just take out all of our creature control elements and bring in some just random threats of our own and some more uh, some more ways to deal. All right, nice. Well, the hand doesn't look good save for the Library of Alexandria, which is just amazing, of course, in a control match. All right, start the draw engine. And let's see, we only have one more target for the Arid Mesa, so I'm gonna go make sure that I uh, play it out here. I am Twister. Okay. Um, you know what? I think I'm going to flash out a 2-2 threat then. It's just a body. And they're going to reset my Library of Alexandria anyways, so. Seems okay to me. Let's play the coast here and smash for two. Next turn, we'll play out the Muta Vault. I wonder if they have Narset in their deck. I guess that would be a reason to run Time Twister, because otherwise Time Twister looks really weird. Jace. Um... Hmm. Let's draw a card in response and see what we want to do. Is that worth remanding now? And they can just recast it? I guess we let it resolve. They can just bounce Jace with the uh, Caracas, so. Slightly awkward, but whatever. Play the Muta Vault. Let's 
Let's play out the spirit. Pass. All right, we're going to have to remand that one back to their hand. Ooh, spicy. Spicy, spicy, spicy draws here. I want to draw a blue source because Arid Mesa doesn't have any more blue sources to go grab. Hmm. So we're going to go land, smash for four, and pass. Game plan here is to draw a card with library as well as flashing out the Wandering Emperor, I think. All right, so let's go fetch our Godless Shrine first. Draw a card with Library, and then go for the Wandering Emperor. Miscalculation, that's fine. We're going to get to kill the... Uh, to ferry here. Ooh, another good draw. Um, hmm. I guess with, we'll just lead with attacking the Teferi first in case they have Condemn or Swords or something. All right, they didn't. So many good plays once again. I'm not sure which one's the best. I guess mentor pass. Hold up uh, library activation, hold up containment priest, hold up mana tithe and days. All right, that's going to flip their Teferi, but they don't have anything in their graveyard currently. If they want a time twister, we're okay with that. Mute of Alt and uh, Selfless Spirit. Pretty good sideboards. Wow, they targeted their miscalculation, so they're going to cast something for like four or five. And they don't want me to be able to counter it in response. So maybe identity. Oh, bribery. Uh, wait. This doesn't work because I have Containment Priest. They know about it. So they can go for Miscalc on my Containment Priest and then I just Mana Tide them. <laughs> and that's the ball game, my friends. All right. I guess, I mean, obviously they didn't know that I had Mana Tithe or that I had Days, but they did know I had Containment Priest. So they can exile a creature from my library, but now they're just dead on board, basically. Yeah, 
because the Mutavolt puts him to one, so any non-creature spell wins. GG's. All right, bada boom, bada bing, baby. Let's go. 1-0, GG go next. Okay, here's round two of this vintage QB with our controlly controlly deck. On the play here, good enough looking hand. No island for days is unfortunate, but we do have some good control elements, especially if we're playing against a creature deck. Uh-oh, don't have a discard effect, please. As we drew a Daddy Venser, huh? All right, so here's the game plan. They cast some sweet spell this turn that I get to daze, and then I slam Ashiok, and they can't beat it. I think that's a good game plan. Bloodgast! I don't want to daze that. <laughs> okay, fine, you win this time. Island was a good draw. There we go. Still get to hold open the days then. And they are on mono black. Oh, I didn't know they brought back braids. Oh, baby. Also, how lucky. I have a mox. Yeah, uh, well, not mono black apparently. Sedgemore Witch. Is that worthy of my days? Nope. Because we are just going to Wrath next turn. Wrath and hold up the days seems a little bit better. Land, Liliana, Repeal. Damn you, friend. Damn you. Oh. Man, they are a lot heavier blue than initially expected, but... Still with a lot of black, aggressive cards. I guess I shouldn't say a lot. It's just really the Bloodgast. Stupid, sexy Bloodgast. So they have a 2-3 Flying Death Touch. I'm not going to counter that. I think I'm going to save Venser for that one, maybe. Or the Wandering Emperor now. Actually, Emperor is a great way to deal with the, uh, the Bloodgast. Yeah, so let's just eat three cards and pass. We ate a Nashi. The one downside about Ashiok here is that I have enabled their Sheldock Isle. And this Inquisition was a really, really unfortunate draw for me. Only because they get to know about the days. They don't get to take any of my four drops. But they get to uh they get to get some good ones from my hand. So no matter how or what they take, the scavenger is going to go up. Um, oh, no, I was wrong. I was going to say no matter what they take, the scavenger is going to go up in power, but they took another sorcery. So let's flash out the wanderer then. And just exile the bloodgast. Here comes Shelly. All right, what is it? I'd say that's pretty pretty good. Oh, boy. Gonna need to find another way to deal with some fat creatures, huh? Putting out braids doesn't do anything. All right, let's uh, exile three more. Land, land, land. Got to just go main phase Venser, bounce the Grave Titan, and then we can pump up our 
Vencer with the Wanderer. And they know about the days, so even if they slam their six land, they can't replay their uh, Grave Titan. Sure, they have a dam as well. Uh, I, I guess they're going to clear my... Oh, they have Snapcaster Mage for the uh, Inquisition. Oh, that doesn't really matter. They can kill my Ashiok and leave the Wanderer. Yep, seems good. So this is gonna be an, this is gonna be a game where balance is what we need to find. Uh, okay, that wasn't bad. We can go uptick, time warp. Exile the huge flyer, play Field of the Dead and pass. And again, they cannot play their uh, Grave Titan until they hit their seventh land. Sadly, they did. Mm. All right, we have two outs. We have Balance. And I guess Spellseeker on balance is actually kind of bad because then I have a creature, but not much I can do about that. <laughs> Naturally. This does make it very hard for them to attack very well, though. Like, I have to wait a turn here. It's the funny thing. Hope they don't draw another discard effect in the meantime. Because if I balance while I have Spellseeker, they just keep the Grave Titan, right? Funny, funny, funny. Funny, funny, funny. <laughs> Oh, this is hilarious. Even if they kill the Spellseeker, they can't kill me in one shot. So yeah, they need to find another discard effect or like a counter, which they're not running that heavy blue. It looks like just a few interactive spells. So I would doubt they're running something like a counter spell proper. Let's see, eight lands, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So they probably have... Majority of their deck just spells, which sucks. Gosh, and I'm drawing freaking islands, which don't even trigger the uh, field of the dead. I could be attacking with the colonnade, I guess. But I almost feel like this is just going to come down to decking, and I don't really want them to have a kill spell for the colonnade. Uh-oh. Don't do it. No thought seizes or anything, please. Oh, wow. So they maybe they do have a counter. Huh. Or maybe they just have a recursion effect to get back the Grave Titan. I'm gonna I wanna keep my colonnade, so I'm not gonna block the Titan, even though I take a little bit more damage. Oh, God, that was a really bad draw. All right. We had to counter our own spell there in order to make them discard their hand. And then they top deck a Karn? Oh no. 
Uh, well, crap. Jeez, really? Holy crap, the top deck. I have to give them bribery, because they can cast the grief and it's a two-turn clock by itself. But now they go grab Sun Titan. Alright, well, at least we get a 2-2 there. Wow, super unlucky. Mm. Planeswalker had to be one of their best hits. All right, so they grab, they grab Sun Titan, which gets back like Hex Mage or Witch. Ugh. Oh, maybe I should have given them. Well, no, no, no. We don't know that for sure. I had to draw a different land to get the. Uh, and I guess they could just minus this turn, anyways. Yeah. In essence, they could have gotten both, no matter what. Hmm. Good beats. And the witch has menace too, right? Yeah. Uh, they can have the land. Another 2 2. Oh. Hold. They get back their Hex Mage. I chump the Sun Titan. Oh, they can get back their Snapcaster Mage. Oh, Snapcaster Mage on bribery. <laughs> the funny. We still have outs here. We still have outs. I could draw like Jace, Jace bounce the Sun Titan, I recast the Sun Titan, I get Ashiok, I mill them out. I don't think I have that many targets left, like Mentor or something. <laughs> Crazy game. All right, Jace off the top. Let's go. Boo. Dang it. Ah, that game felt pretty close. Ah, we needed them We needed them to brick that one turn after the balance. Oh man, dig through time would have been insane too. Oh, Cryptic Command was another win. Yeah, Cryptic Jace, those were both wins. Identity was a win. I we had three wins, but a lot of bricks. Yeah, ah, that one turn, that post balance turn where they drew the Karn and they had a relevant card. That's what killed us. Okay, what do we bring in versus them? I mean, if they have bribery, we probably want to nuke the bribery hit because this is the only thing that matters then just bring in the containment priest all right good beats ashiok almost did the work ashiok i guess cursed us in the end because it allowed them to shell dock but Damn. All right, well, can't mulligan that. Turn one, Library of Alexandria. Hope they don't have a discard effect, and then we get to draw a card and start holding up counter magic. Damn it. So, this is where we have to question, do we even want to play a land this turn? And I think the answer is no. I think we would rather skip a turn and try to get the library back online. And if they just have another discard effect, we have to just say, so be it, good beats. All right.
Library active, and I think it was worth it. They might just go all in on the rat, but... Oh. Okay. Interesting. Mm, Thirst was a pretty good draw. Let's go land, draw, Thirst the Void Walker, pass. And maybe start getting ratted. Oh, Nashi! Okay, can't counter that. Let's see what we hit. Venser and a Vendillion click. Uh, sure. I guess they could bounce one of my lands if they want to. No, it looks like they're going to go for the information. Maybe take, like, Mentor here. At this point, we want to just draw Wrath, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, they might take Skydiver, I guess. Damn. How many blue sources did we see from them last game? Because they're running some like double blue cards. Good double blue cards, but the greed. I don't think we saw too many duels, did we? What did they take? Oh, they took the mentor. Okay. Not a good draw there. So we go land, draw. That was a good draw. Skydiver pass. Yep. So we're going to block the Nashi here. We did see a uh, fallen Shinobi from them as well. So that is something to keep note of later on. So land, draw a card. Wrath. And this is where our control deck starts presumably taking over the game. They know I have days in my hand, so they just can't slam Grave Titan. Nice, and that's a fantastic answer to that later on. All right, now let's go land, draw a card, to fairy, draw, untap, untap, discard. What do we want to discard here? Um, I guess I can just discard the Sea Chrome Coast. Braids, that's fine. Draw end of turn, time warps. Pretty good here. Let's see. Artifact, creature, or land. I think I'm going to pitch the library then. Even though the island is good for the field of the dead purposes. Now we can get this Gideon online. 
Or we could just break, actually ECD them. Yeah, let's ECD their braids. Oh, I didn't even realize that I'd still have to discard a card here. All right, I'm assuming we're gonna see a Grave Titan that we're going to be able to daze and then mana tithe. Yep. And that's why we waited. Got him. <laughs> no has been called. All right. Library of Alexandria doing Library of Alexandria things, huh? Maybe I want the Wall of Omens. Again, the problem with the Wall of Omens is that it uh, is not very good with my balance, but maybe the Wall of Omens is better than Skydiver when they don't have artifacts. And maybe I should just be bringing this Lyra in. Again, another awkward card versus bribery, but if we can cast it, it seems good enough. In fact, that's going to be better than the Wall of Omens. I guess Days on the draw, actually. I'll keep the Mana Tithe, but Days on the draw is pretty damn awkward. Go to game three here. Ooh. I think this is a keeper. <sighs> Spellseeker can go grab Balance. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and grab God the Shrine now that we drew into the blue source. We play Wall of Omens here, turn two. Bloodgast. Ooh, but they're missing lands. We can hopefully punish them then. Let's get the Ashiok online then while they're missing land drops. Try to punish. Ate the Grave Titan in two swamps. Go, baby, go! Grief? Alright. So they exiled their Scavenger, and now they get to take a card from my hand. They might just look at this hand and go, oh my god, I can't win. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Well, that's too bad. They missed land drops, but we got them. All right, let's go to game or round three and try to trophy. And here's the third and final round of this vintage cube draft with our Esper Control on the draw with a very unkeepable hand. Let's go down to six. And this is not better. Ah, yikes. I guess the hope here is that we are playing against a creature deck and we can cast the dam on like turn four if we find another white source. Okay, that gives me a little bit of hope. Uh, very unlikely I'm going to daze on turn two by bouncing my island, but you never know. Maybe they do something crazy. Copter is also going to give us quite a problem. Oh, balance is another really solid one here. We actually lead with swamp, sadly. Because if I draw another black source next turn, there's a small chance I want to uh, hard cast the dam. Copter is going to be an issue. I'm going to need to find a second white source so I can wandering emperor exile the copter. Because copter gets around all of my... Uh, all of my cards here. Oh, is this natural order? Oh my god, we did it. That is a huge hit for us. Wow, wow, wow. That's fantastic. 
Okay. White source off the top, please. Regrowth, they're one drop. I'm okay with this. Now they get to crew the copter and do a little bit of looting, but that's not bad. Okay, discard the forest. Arid Mesa. Dang it. Wow. It's actually pretty sad how bad a blue source is there. Even a black source, I'd be able to kill the Arbor Elf. Oh, please don't kill my planes. All right. Phew. Killing the black source gives us a chance. Planes off the top. Come on. They're also making my balance better. But I don't think we fire off the balance for a little bit. Planes. Ah. I'm going to wait. Terrifying that they discarded Huntmaster, but I think I have to wait. Oh my god, that's awful for me. Okay, now we have a problem, because now they get to draw... A, well, now I guess balance is not as bad, because now I don't have to discard as many cards, but... Holy smokes. That is brutality. No, dang it. Yikes. Oh, second white source, and we were so good. And now we are not. Now we are in terrible shape. Oh, God. <laughs> this is fine. Everything's fine. This is fine. I just have to deal with three different things next turn somehow. <laughs> okay. Deserved. <laughs> uh, there was a window of opportunity. There were, there were a couple turns where if we had found a second white source, we are in great shape. Sadly, that was not meant to be that game. All right, so versus the green deck, I'm going to cut the days. I'm going to bring in the... I mean, on the play, the days is okay, I guess. Definitely bring in the Containment Priest since we saw Natural Order. Um, don't think the Sun Titan's necessary here. Lyra's usually pretty good as well. Hmm. What do we we saw one signet and that's probably not good enough. All right, just go like that. Oh man, so bad, so bad. All right, but that was a mulligan where I uh... no, actually I, I bottomed an island, didn't I? This hand looks good. I think here we're gonna lead on turn one, Godless Shrine tapped, and then just plan on having Blood Chief's Thirst for a one drop. Did not have a one drop. Ooh, we are pretty far away from Cryptic, but I'm still gonna play Field of the Dead here, since if we draw an untapped, or rather if we throw, draw a three drop next turn, we're gonna wanna be able to cast that. Instead, we are gonna thirst that stupid sexy Rafelos. And I hate to say it, but I hope we just want to draw lands here, blue sources. That is a very... How many lands did we see from them in game one? Different lands. I don't think we saw that many. Hmm. Maybe they didn't draw them last game. Island! Yeah, that's good too. Ashiox nuts versus green decks, usually. as we hit two lands and a copter. Th 
Thrag Tusk. Land? Oh, bad, 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 bad. <sighs> Toski regrowth in a Sylvan library. Hmm. I mean, it feels bad, but I think we oust. Let them have a 3-3. Three, three. Negates the clock on the Ash Yawk for now. Puts an extra card in the graveyard for dig through time. Oh, I mean, they have one, two, three, four. They have five different land types right now. Oh, wait, Island? What is going on? There's the Hunt Master. All right, eat more cards. We eat the Thrag Tusk. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so I don't think I want to discard any cards. So we play Colonnade here, and then we balance. They're going to have to sack all of their creatures and one of their lands. And then that should be pretty good now. We have access to all of our big spells. Good, and they sacrifice the Cradle, which makes sense. They don't have any creatures, but that was a different land type for Field of the Dead. Whisperwood's good. Once again, keep eating their library. Tree Speaker, Slime, Land. Um, and I think it makes sense to Conquer's Death. Oh, they didn't even sack it in response. Well, it doesn't matter. We still haven't seen Natural Order exiled or hit. Tamio, huh? Uh, what does that do? They can get back their Rafelos, I guess? It's whatever. Sure. Exile target online card from the map. Okay. Let's just keep uptaking. They only have 10 cards left in their deck. Fast bond, pest infestation. That's a new one. And a cascade. We can just uh, fractured identity the Tamio and then tap down the Rafelos. Seems good to me. Uh oh. Hornet Queen. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to need to draw what? Dam next turn? I guess Cryptic Command works too. Actually, Cryptic Command keeps them locked down, and they only have six cards left in their deck. Did we eat Craterhoof yet? No. Boseju, Oko, and an Arcana of Valor's Reach. So we can go land, Signet, pass. Is this Craterhoof? All right. Counter that, tap down all of their creatures, and that should be easy peasy, banana squeezy. Three more cards, they have two cards left into their deck. We ate Elf, Tracker, Hex Drinker. Um, let's see. I want to create the notebook, I guess. Yeah, and go digging for a wrath. That seems good. Draw a card. One, two. 
One, two, three, four. No wrath, but remand should buy us enough time. And la or the wandering emperor can eat one of their creatures. Let's see. Teferi only technically costs an effective one mana because of the uh, because of the uh, notebook. So let's go to fairy, draw, pass, untap two, and that should be game. We just deck them out next turn. So they must have natural order in their hand or it's their last card in their library. Oh, I guess the natural order could actually be the manifest card. <laughs> it's pretty funny. All right, so I'll go one, two, three. Exile that. All right, GG. Oh, I guess it was only two mana. All right, that worked out well. Phew. Can we do that one more time? I don't know. I really don't know, but we're going to cut the days on the draw. And I guess bring the Titan back in. I mean, it doesn't seem great, but I don't think Wall of Omens is what we want versus them. Uh. Yep, I mean, balance... Balance is going to be our MVP, I'm guessing. We always have to be wary, though. At any point, they could natural order into Crater Hoof Behemoth, you know? Or just hard cast it, so... Okay, this is a good hand. It's got Dam for turn four, Containment Priest for natural order. That is not what I wanted to see, but... We can just wrath it on turn four if they invest all of their time into it. Okay. That's fine. I do need to find another land, though. And that's there's no guarantee I'm going to find a fourth land. Probably just have to remand any spell that they cast here, yeah. Just to draw an extra card. All right, great. We did find a land. Ooh, are they stuck on two lands? If they're stuck on two lands, this Wrath might be good enough. Holy hell, we're going to do it. Now we get to slam Lyra into, like, Time Walk. Jeez. Well, that's probably game over. I mean, it sucks that... <laughs> Feels like the last couple of matches we've only won because of mana screw, but. Sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles, you know? No need to time walk here. Just slam out a 6 6 while the opponent's stuck on two lands. Sure. Still lethal. We hit him for eight. Time walk, GG. Time warp, GG. All right. Hey, we did it. No power, but blue-white control, or Esper control, I should say, pulls off a nice little 3-0 in the uh, updated vintage cube. Feels good. That was my first one uh, of the updated cube, so glad we got to run that. Uh, what did we have? We had one new card, the Wandering Emperor. Otherwise, oh no, we had the Silent Clearing as well. And Field of the Dead. Okay, we had some lands. The Field of the Dead was pretty good. I enjoyed it here. Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. I know that video was a little bit long, but sometimes these controlly decks do uh, 
draw out the game a little bit longer. But yeah, thanks for watching here on the Card Kingdom YouTube channel. Don't forget to give them a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And we'll see you back next week.